As we're going through the Bible, book by book and chapter by chapter, today we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. And there's some interesting things that start at the beginning of this chapter. Apparently one of the things that people were struggling with back in the first century, and we still struggle with today, is the idea, the concept of unity. When you look at the beginning of this chapter, Paul talks a lot about unity. He starts off by saying things about with all humility and gentleness, with patience, accept one another in love, diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. There is one body and one spirit, just as there <clears throat> excuse me, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. There's something that we should definitely take note of there. It's the oneness of this passage. There's one body, there's one spirit, there's one Lord. There's one Father. There's one baptism, one faith. There's one you know, body, one corpus, one group. And, and there's one power that binds us and draws us together. And that's the love of God shown to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. There are not several separate different bodies. Like when we look in the religious world today, there's all different types of Christianity. There's all different branches of Christianity. That was never, ever, ever God's plan. God's plan was always for there to be His people united together through the blood of His Son, drawn together through the love and grace that He's shown to us through the cross, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the free gift, the offer of salvation that's given to all men or offered to all people everywhere. When we look at this passage, there's one body. There's one baptism. There's not a hundred different types of baptisms. There's one baptism. There's one faith just like there's one God. So we have no excuse for all these different things that we see. We need to make, make the determination in our mind. We need to decide that we are going to find God's truth in the scriptures. We're going to find what God is saying, and we're going to work together. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean we're just all going to sit down one day and just magically agree. It means we're all going to do the hard work of diligently searching through the scriptures, of arguing about what these different things mean. And I mean argue in the sense of sit down and, and actually discuss, figure out what is God telling us here or there or wherever we happen to be looking and then making what God says the priority. Not what I've always believed, not what my parents believe, not what some preacher is telling me on TV. What is God saying? And we need to figure out what he's saying so that we can have that unity, that oneness that is being talked about. Because there's one God, there's one faith, there's one Lord, one baptism, one body. If there's 700 different bodies out there, and we see these 700 different bodies, there's still just one that belongs to God. We have to find that one body and be a part of it. He's going to go on and he's going to talk about some of the things that God has done to make this possible. In verse 11 it says, He personally gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the, saint, for the training of the saints and the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and then a knowledge of God's Son, growing into a mature man with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. And now listen to this next part, it's really cool. Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning and cleverness and the techniques of deceit. So the 700 different groups that we see out there, or however many there is, all those exist because of human cleverness and the techniques of deceit. They all exist because there's people who draw away others after themselves, who for whatever reason, whether it's because they want money, whether they want fame, or whatever it happens to be, who will draw people away from the idea of unity, from the idea of oneness. God is telling us, however, that throughout time, He has given people like apostles, and prophets, and evangelists. You can read about the apostles in the New Testament. There are prophets and prophetesses in the New Testament. Uh, Philip has daughters. The, 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 the man Philip from Acts chapter 6, he has daughters. The evangelist Philip has daughters who are prophetesses. And there are also people who preach the gospel, evangelists like Timothy and Titus and Philip. There are pastors or elders or shepherds and there are teachers and God has given us all these different roles so that we can achieve that unity so we can achieve that oneness that that to so find our way into that one body one faith through the one baptism 
All of this is what God has done so that we could have new life in Christ, which is where Paul picks up from verse 17, that you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their thoughts. And so the, the Gentiles here is being contrasted with believers. We should no longer walk the way that we used to walk. But now that we know about the Messiah, we should begin to act like the Messiah. So as we grow in that one faith, as we become unified, as, as we are bound together in the love of Christ, we should begin to act more like Christ every day. And that, going through the Bible, book by book and chapter by chapter, is Ephesians chapter 4.